Hello and welcome to a Rogue Entity tutorial. My name's Suits and today we're going to be covering the Unreal Engine subsystems. So what is a subsystem? A subsystem is an instance class that's managed by the Unreal Engine itself. So it's, just, it's already coded in to automatically create and it automatically initializes and deinitializes the class. And there's several types of subsystems and then they control the scope and where the, the system's available. And also when those systems are created, they become the parent system and therefore they'll control the life cycle of the subsystem. And when you have a subsystem created, it's very easily to access it. There's built-in functionality in those parent systems that allows you to access it and I'll cover that shortly but the, there's also blueprint functionality so you, you can create a, a subsystem and easily access it straight away in blueprints and the subsystems exist there's sort of editor subsystems and game subsystems and varying types of each I'm mostly going to cover the game stuff here not really going to get into editor subsystems but I'll, I'll, I'll cover how to access and create the editor subsystems but we're more going to focus on the game subsystems but if you have to sum up what is a subsystem real quickly, it is really just a U object and it has it, the difference between the U object though and a subsystem is the integration into the Unreal Engine already. So it's automatically created, it's automatically dis destroyed and it has those interfacing initialization, deinitialization functionality already built in. So why would you want to use a subsystem? And partly because of that autom automation so that you don't have to control the life cycle yourself. So if you're going to you know, use some U object, if you use a subsystem instead, you don't have to create it. You don't have to spawn it. It's already done when the system starts up. But the primary benefit of subsystems is the same for any U object class, really, that you're going to use. It's You can modularize your code and you know create... Uh, reusable and extendable subsystem like manager systems and you know you can have these systems that are compartmentalized and uh, reusable in other projects reusable in your own project that you know in different sections and it's easily accessible you avoid uh having these ginormous like player controller classes or other classes that are just getting huge you can just break that code out into its own little modular like like a component and i already mentioned that you know, the, you can create these systems so they're front end friendly. You, you can, um, if you've got uh, people working on your team that are mostly like artists or something like that, you can have quite an easily blueprint interface that, you know, you can just grab these references in blueprint to the subsystems. As I mentioned, there's several types of subsystems. You've got your, your engine subsystem, editor subsystem, game instance subsystem, local player subsystem, world subsystem, and they all have their own base class that you inherit off to create that subsystem. Essentially, the though the depending on how you're going to use the subsystem is what uh, subsystem you'll inherit off to create your subsystem. Let's look at the life cycle first of these subsystems. So each subsystem, as I mentioned, has an automated initialized initialize, and that is connected to the that parent system. So the, when I was talking about parent systems before, I was talking about the game instance. So your game instance class will automatically create a game instance subsystem, and it will execute that initialize function when the game instance initializes, and it will deinitialize when it's shut down. And you can put put debugs in there for when you see when you start the game and end the uh, session in the editor, it'll execute those. And the same for the world sus subsystem and the local player subsystem. You know, they'll, they'll be created when the world's created, they'll be created when the local player is created and they'll be and they'll ex execute that initialize and deinitialize when they're either destroyed or shut down. So to create a subsystem, you just inherit from that base class of the of the supported subsystem that you're looking to use. So if you if the purpose of your subsystem is to do with some sort of game management task, maybe that you might want to make it a game instance subsystem. You know, if it's some um, runtime world data you want to manage, then you might have a world subsystem and you'd use the U world subsystem. And you'd just simply override those initialize and deinitialize functions and put any code in there that you want to start up the system, which is particularly useful when, for when you're doing plugins. You don't have to, you know, if you're going to give the plugin to someone else, you say, oh, yep, yeah, just install this and then call this function to initialize everything. If, if you've got your initialization built through a subsystem, you don't have to do anything because it's going to... So if you have a world subsystem, when the world's created and that code is in there in the plugin, it's going to hit that initialization. That's going to initialize. Your your plugin is already there and it's initialized and it's doing its thing. 
So once you've created your subsystem and you need to access it, Unreal has the get subsystem functions built in and they're built into whatever parent object your subsystem exists under. So you could see there that the game instance has a get subsystem, local player has a get subsystem, get world has a get subsystem. Uh, the only difference is the engine and editor subsystems have their own get engine and get editor subsystem functions. Not sure why they did that, but yeah. And obviously you need to get a reference to these things. So, I mean, I've got get world there is how you'd get the world, but those examples at the top, you'd have to have a reference to your game instance and there's just the get game instance function. And the same with uh, get local player. You, you can easily do that through your player controller. The functions are there. And then you've got access to your subsystems or in, in the case here, you can assign a reference to your subsystem in whatever class and you can just access it freely in that class and because it, it will exist as so long as that parent object exists, i.e. the world. So I sort of covered on this before, but the some use cases for the subsystem is definitely class extension. When you know when you're getting these monster classes and you're trying to implement some other feature to your player controller or your game instance or something like that, then it's probably a good use case for a subsystem you can break that code off have it in a standalone subsystem the the other use case is when you've got some sort of centralized logic you want to have or state management for your environment or your world or your you know like i've seen them for dialogue systems or just any management cloud weather system so the state of the weather it's just a central state although the uh i've got the warning there at the bottom about avoiding replication requirements is the subsystems don't support replication themselves however they can easily read and get access to you know the game instance to read replicated values for example if you had some sort of what's an example if you have teams in your game and the game instance has the replicated list of all the teams that you know is fully accessible and you want to do something in a subsystem with a team then game instance maintains the replicated list but the subsystem even a, um, a like a local player subsystem can then access that replicated data to talk to teams or do something with teams and even update those teams like back to the game instance through uh, rpc or whatever but the probably the biggest use case i've seen is just that manager system like the, there are so many systems you'll build for a game can just easily be broken down into like you know if you've done any sort of games you always have some manager class that you want to have or uh what's one i've done recently a grid so i had a grid and you've got all the data for the grid bam it's in a subsystem i can access it anywhere by going get world get you know grid subsystem or whatever and all the data's there anyone can access it that has a reference to the world and then if i ever want to bring that grid across to another game you know maybe the subsystem's in a plugin or something but it's it doesn't really matter it's in a subsystem i can drop that subsystem into another game and there's my grid and all the data management and the interfaces to it all. So really powerful subsystems, really scratching the surface with what you can do with the subsystem here. But the uh, I'm going to go on and there'll be another video on, I'm going to convert. So in our, my RTS series, we've done some uh, selection. So we've done our you know box selection and, and unit selection, and we're going to convert that to a subsystem. I'll be a local player subsystem because selection is really only to do with the local player. So that'll, that'll, I think that'll be an interesting conversion to see how you can move something that we've been doing before to a subsystem. If you can think of any good use cases for subsystems, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, this, uh, this presentation is available on my Patreon for free. Leave a like or a subscribe or both if you found this information useful. Thanks for watching.